Morning, everyone. Um, I'm going to give a quick introduction on uh, Edgex Foundry. How many of you have worked with Edgex Foundry before? You have. Okay. So it's it's really going to be uh, an introduction. What it can do. What the current status is. Uh, where we want to want to go. Take a seat. Um, and how the roadmap uh, is currently looking. Um, so a little bit of background, um, how it works, uh, where we are, uh, and what we've done from Dell Technology uh, as an investment on, uh, on Edgex Foundry. Who am I? I'm uh, Jeroen Mackenbach. I'm lead system uh, engineer for EMEA, for Dell Technologies, for the IoT and uh, Edge Compute. Take a seat. Um, I've been working for 20 years in uh, embedded computing and uh, in industrial uh, computing. Um, I wrote my first assembly at the age nine and probably haven't done any coding after that. Uh, but I've been heavily involved in, uh, in, uh, in people that have and uh, helped them to debug their code. Good. EdgeX Foundry, what is EdgeX Foundry? EdgeX Foundry is an open source, vendor neutral project. It's, it's more of an ecosystem uh, and it consists of, of microservices. Um, they're loosely coupled um, and they're sitting at the edge. Uh, main target for its design is that it's hardware and OS agnostic. So whether you run Windows, Linux, whatever it can run. Um, the goal is to enable and encourage the growth of IoT solutions. And we see, uh, especially in, in my territory, uh, a lot of an explosion of, of growth there. Now, if you take a look at the IoT market, there's, um, there's a huge diversity there. Um, in, in the, the skill set that is needed to actually get IoT solutions uh, to market. Um, in the connectivity, and the amount of uh, protocols that's, uh, that's needed there. The application environment, uh, we see Java, Python, R, Go, C. Um, there's not a single language that, uh, that is used there. And also in terms of operating system, uh, yeah, it's all Linux but uh, the majority is, uh, is, is on a variety of OSs uh, there. So specifically at the edge, we see that, uh, that there's uh, so many different varieties of uh, that fragmentation, um, and all the way from the edge up to uh, the fog and, and then into the cloud. Um, you see that uh, those different uh, aspects. Now, what is Edgex Foundry in principle? It's a collection of, an, of a dozen uh, microservices uh, written in, in various languages. Um, and they work together to make the application. Um, so we have a data flow. And I will show you later how that, uh, that works. So basically, you have the sensor data that's collected uh, from the device services. Um, that's brought, brought on to the core services. And the core services bring that on to the export services. Um, and that can be brought back uh, to do some analytics on it. Or send it into the cloud to do further uh, AI on it. Now, all these uh, different microservices uh, communicate via REST API with each other. That's the key uh, to make sure that, uh, that they can exist. Um, and the microservices are deployed via Docker uh, or Docker Compose. So here we have a, an overview of the whole uh, framework. So what we see here is that uh, specifically uh, for instance, a sensor detects a temperature, which is 102 degrees centigrade, uh, over a bugnet uh, driver. That is brought up to the core data, so for logging. 
And that can be brought into distribution, so it can be later on sent into the cloud, or sent back to the rules engine to do some analytics on there, and then be brought on to command set, and that command set can, for instance, say, hey, I have a device that can understand MQTT, stop the machine. So that's basically the whole clue of what Edge Foundry can do. And you see those different layers uh, laid out, uh, really specific, the data services, the core services, the supporting services, and the export services. And we typically call those the south on the device end and the export, the north side, uh, to export to, uh, to Fogo Cloud. So here you see again the full overview of uh, how these microservices are, are set up um, and how they communicate with each other and interact with each other. So it's just a, a full collection of services working together to make one unified system. These are some of the performance targets which we are currently working on. Um, basically, the target was to run on a Raspberry Pi 3 um, with a 1 gigabyte of RAM, 64-bit CPU, and at least uh, 32 gigabytes of, uh, of RAM. Um, it should start up in less than a second, or a minute, uh, post-OS boot. Uh, we should have a latency less than one second. Um, and it should be agnostics for, uh, for different OSs and hardware. Now, between the Barcelona, and I will go into the details of the uh, actual roadmap uh, later on, um, the last step we've taken uh, this June was to move to uh, the California lease. We made a huge step forward, uh, basically reducing the footprint from uh, almost 300 megabytes to 42 megabytes. Um, and have the startup time, and that was very important, reduced from 35 seconds up to less than, uh, than a second. So these microservices can live where they want, and that's the good part, because they can run either on the edge or in the fog or even in the cloud. Depends on where you want them. Um, when ten, when Latency is important, you tend to move those lower upstream, so back to the, to the south. Um, also, uh, in terms of storage and cost, um, what you might want to do is not send all the data over a 3G connection, because that's costly. Yeah. Um, and you also could create a situation where you have disconnected nodes that can only come online, online for a certain period. Um, so the, the microservices um, can be adopted in, in several use cases, um, depending on where you want them, and have that uh, extreme loose coupling. And here you see an overview of how that uh, could look. So you could have a device communicating directly to the cloud, or a device communicating to a gateway, doing some analytics on there, data collection, and then send a reduced amount of data into the cloud. Um, you could also remove uh, analytics onto the fog where you have a big client, and I will show you some scenarios in the, in the next slide, um, where you can do some analytics on high-end computing. Or you can have a, a fat client on, on the edge and, and do everything in one machine. So here you see a typical uh, building automation system uh, as a sort of a proof of concept. So on the room level, we're just collecting data. Yeah, so we have the security layer, we have some on and off situations that can be managed locally. Um, just the core services are running there. Now on the floor level, you want to do some analytics and maybe you want to do some, some uh, data aggregation there. 
Now, if you move that up, you go to a building level, and basically what you could do there is create some dashboarding, uh, some, some more uh, overview situations. Um, see this, your, your, your intelligent thermostat in your house that's running there. And then it's coming up to the cloud. And there you can do your deep learning and, and doing more advanced AI learning. So currently, the supported protocols and interfaces is HTTP, HTTPS, MQTT. Uh, there's still some considerable work in uh, AWS and IBM uh, Watson. But uh, this is uh, the current status as we, uh, as we are uh, now. So on the south side, these are the ready available device drivers. So you could just enable them and start communicating with them. In the Delhi release, we're going to have a go and see API, which will enable you to write your own device drivers. And that becomes more interesting than to, to integrating you to your own IoT uh, setups. Uh, because you might have a device which uh, communicates uh, a, a driver uh, which is not in here, which is most likely. Good. The ecosystem and the current status. Um, this is a little bit outdated. Um, actually, this week we had some big announcements where actually Intel joined us. Um, the Intel... Uh, a retail group joined, and uh, they were very interested uh, in uh, in joining us. Um, there's a lot of movement going on all the time uh, with this, and uh, a lot of people are engaging at this stage. Here you see the uh, the actual project organization and um, the way that it's uh, set up. Uh, one of the founding members of uh, this project, and actually he is the, the one that uh, wrote uh, line one of the whole project, is uh, Jim White. He's one of my co-workers in the US, um, supporting by, uh, by our CTO, Jason Shepard. Um, he's also on this conference. He gave uh, a huge session yesterday uh, on, on the technical deep dive. Um, and we're going to be holding an external event here for everyone to join. Um, so if you want to participate, actually let us know. And it's a go. Uh, it's it's an event which is not here, but um, it's really close. And uh, a lot of talks with the steering committee is ha happening there at the moment. In the next uh, three days. So. The California release is, uh, has been launched in June. Um, so it's got uh, all the security features in there. Um, what we did is that all the services have been transferred from Java to Go with that, uh, that use decrease of, uh, of resource uh, constraints. Um, there have been a lot of additions on the northbound connections, and we've in included ARM64 support. Um, so here you see that uh, the uh, the actual whole group is uh, here in Edinburgh uh, to uh, to discuss the latest uh, uh, on uh, the Delhi release, and we're also discussing uh, some of the future Fuji releases. Um, so currently, there's more than 40 developers working on and developing on, on this. Some within Dell, but a lot of outside Dell uh, contributing code to, uh, to this uh, concept. So here you see the overview of uh, the actual releases. Uh, we launched uh, Barcelona, which was, uh, was really huge in 2017. California is, is, is really good uh, and we're planning on releasing Delhi this month, later this month. Uh, Edinburgh, um, it's going to be April, it's not going to be here. Um, Fiji, 
uh, October 2019 and there is a Geneva planned for April 2020. You see also some of the, uh, the different uh, new features. Uh, the actual uh, 2019 release is going to have also certification uh, included. Um, the Delhi release will have a, a, a UI included, which is really handy because at the moment there's, it's pretty hard to actually interact with the services. Uh, you have to do that via REST API. Uh, so yeah, you can do it, but uh, a UI is, is definitely uh, something that's, uh, that's needed. Um, so in Fuji, we're going to have multi-host, uh, that, that's going to be a big, big thing. And we're currently working uh, on, on the whole security setup, uh, which is uh, specifically challenging in these types of uh, setups, because it's, it's going to be uh, distributed on different, uh, different scenarios. Um, so there's a huge plan for that. Uh, I actually went uh, through it, it's, uh, it's I think 60 slides of, of brain dump uh, of the people involved on how to actually uh, get that done uh, correctly. Um, so here's some of the highlights of the Delhi release, where I've already gone over. So this was initially uh, the key um, accomplishments since 2017. So we've been able to uh, biannually uh, release a roadmap and uh, get the first two release dates uh, met. Um, we got 64 individual code contributors. Um, we have refactored the whole uh, code base to Golang. Um, there's specifically good documentation on the whole uh, project. Uh, actually, if you want to get started, everything's really well documented. Um, and, and that's what I'm seeing in my daily work. There's a, a huge amount of customers actually getting involved in EdgeX Foundry and starting to actually do proof of concept on EdgeX Foundry, uh, which is good to see. Uh, and actually, uh, people get that uh, set up. Now, what have been the Dell investments in, uh, in this? Um, we've invested seven man years uh, of effort to the initial project Fuse. That's how Agic Foundry was uh, initially uh, codenamed. Um, we've raised an IoT solution division in October 2017, which is my, my division. Um, the, um, the actual Dell technology leadership is, is done by uh, the uh, Edgex Foundry president, which is uh, governed by uh, Jason Shepard, my CTO. Um, two members of the technical steering committee. Uh, we have a core working group, uh, Trevor Kahn, and the system man management working group, Jim White, who are part of, uh, of the whole steering committee. So what is our offer? So next to uh, the HX Foundry uh, ecosystem, uh, we of course have uh, our Dell platforms, which, uh, which are enabled to run HX Foundry. We have VMware. VMware is also part of the Dell, uh, Dell technology groups. Uh, that enables to manage uh, these IoT projects and uh, soft and hardware uh, in this ecosystem. We have Secure Works and we have RSA, which uh, makes sure that, uh, that it all gets secured. And we have Dell EMC on the north side, which is the infrastructure uh, company that uh, enables the distribution of core analytics and, uh, for instance, projects like Nautilus. In the world of herd, and we have uh, Pivotal, largest cloud uh, cloud provider, uh, which is also under the uh, Dell technology uh, umbrella. And then we have uh, Dell Boomi, 
which enables uh, really easy cloud uh, enablement uh, to uh, workflow scenarios. And that's basically a full ecosystem inside Dell that can enable uh, a full IoT solution with the products that we uh, deliver in both hard and software. So what is the design uh, goals with Agix Foundry and where, where does Dell want to go with this? Um, basically we want to we want to accelerate this because we think that that Agix Foundry is, is, is one a platform but it's, it's sort of like an ETL on doing IoT and I see customers struggling with IoT and, and how to actually uh, do that day by day uh, and I think that the foundation and the, the, uh, the components where Agix Foundry is, is built on is, is sort of um, the way to go. Um, it allows interoperability with, with partners. So there's a lot of work with, with our, uh, our partners, but also with our competitors and um, other vendors. That's, that's a good thing that we're neutral. Um, it should be the center of the Dell Technology software solution at the edge. Uh, we definitely see um, an increase of interest on the edge at the moment. It's more of an explosion. Um, we want to provide a total Dell Technology S solution with the Photon OS, that's a Linux, Linux variant which is uh, open sourced by VMware, um, Edgex Foundry, uh, initially a Nautilus project, Pulse IoT Center and a little IoT agent which is also uh, open sourced. Worldwide Herd, which is uh, one of the analytics platforms. We have Project Iris, which is the security uh, setup. And um, our Dell Gateways and our Dell Core Servers. So if you want to start yourself on this, here are some of the links and uh, I will uh, share my slides to make sure that everyone uh, can, uh, can access that uh, code. You can just uh, actually, later today, uh, there will be a lunch uh, where I'm actually showcasting Agix Foundry, uh, setting it up in two different, uh, different flavors, uh, one in Docker and one with uh, uh, a snap. So you, uh, you see both versions uh, running. You need to register for this though. Um, on Tuesday, we have uh, Jason Shepard, my CTO. He's talking about uh, uh, legacy of goods and he will uh, give a pitch on, on where we want to go as Dell Technology. Uh, and he has the latest uh, and greatest uh, on this. Um, on Wednesday we have Jim White talking and he will uh, get uh, Lean and Mean in the distributed uh, path um, for this uh, Edgex Foundry. Questions? Um, well, we ha we have uh, we have started with. Uh, Can you repeat the question for the. Oh yeah, yeah, sure. I, I have Mikey. Uh, why have we chosen uh, Photon OS? Um, what we've seen is we've we've done a lot of work on uh, with Canonical at the moment. We have a really strong. Actually, someone from Canonical was just uh, talking to me here. Uh, we have a, a very strong relationship with uh, Canonical. All of our gateway products and, and most of our laptops are running uh, Ubuntu. Uh, for the Dell gateways, we've chosen Ubuntu Core and the Snap setup there. Now, what we've seen is that um, 
the maintaining a platform uh, over time um, is challenging, especially with security challenges and also with the uh, the way that uh, you need to update these systems all the time. So having all these devices, and I mean millions of devices in the field, uh, and having these updates uh, managed by a third party as canonical will be very challenging for us. And that's why we're looking to see if we can use that Photon OS, because it's ours, it's VMware, yeah. if we can re-leverage that and use that as the, the container OS of choice to actually run Agix Foundry on. So that, that's the idea at the moment. Other questions? Yes? Um, is there any place that you can find information on the security infrastructure or what you're... I, I have a white paper. It's, it's actually all the... Um, the, the question was about the security. Um, all the documentation of the whole project is open. And actually on the wiki, there's all the meeting minutes. And there's also the documentation about uh, the security. So you can find it there. But I will, I will, I will be able to share it with you. And there'll be more added to docs.edgexcountry.org in the near future. Right now it's in a separate location, but we're working on moving it all in. Good. There's no further questions. Oh, there's another one. Can you share some more details about the device blockchain? Yeah. Um, the question is, uh, can you can you elaborate a little bit more about uh, device provisioning and uh, device uh, updates? Um, at the moment, our um, Ubuntu core devices, uh, they are dynamically updated over time. They're also, the firmware is, is part of the LFWF, so the Open Source Firmware Initiative, and basically is dynamic. So as soon as there is an update, it will update these devices. Um, so that's for the security updates, um, and with the snaps you will be able to actually deploy uh, your application and update your application to our uh, snap store. So that's the whole ecosystem that we have in place to actually make sure that, that your device can be updated over time. And the biggest challenge for IoT is indeed um, bringing these devices at its place and then have them auto provisioning themselves and then start working as the function they they need now there's a lot of initiatives going on and actually i've been talking with a lot of uh, cto's uh, from the companies that we've been working with um, there's different scenarios and actually intel and arm are working together now on a new initiative and they've showcased it last week, I forgot the name, um, but they basically have a framework and an SDK that makes sure that as soon as you attest on the device in the field, it will actually self-provision itself and start to work as it should be. So there's a, there's a lot of interest on that at the moment, because that's a tough job. Uh, we, we have things like cloud in it, but uh, cloud in it is, is, is sort of, okay, that, that's your workload, right? That, that's going to work. But how do you do that in a secure way where you actually provision that device securely uh, with your TPM and your secure boot and everything else around that to make sure that that device is not compromised, but also in the logistical chain? And that's a challenge for a lot of customers. So we're working on that and we have uh, a lot of customers that actually uh, are looking uh, how to do that 
And I'm working together with those customers to actually set that up and make sure that that's happening. Thing is that Dell has the tools to get that working, but we don't do it ourselves. It's the partners that we work with that actually do that. Yes? Is there any plans to run HX as a service? So developers will need to deploy their own solutions in the cloud so they will have micro subscription and get it with their embedded devices and IoT terminals. So as a sort of a... a, a yeah, as, as, as a button, as a service. No, I've, 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 not, I've not heard of plans on doing that. Maybe one of the partners will do it. Yeah, might, absolutely. Uh, that, that's the thing, especially with EdgeX Foundry, there, there's plenty of room to, to actually adopt what we have, start working and, and, and commercializing that yourself. So there is still a level mark? Uh, absolutely, yeah, okay. definitely. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> I have one question. Yes. Yes. Uh, threat. Mm -hmm. um, I've not ran into threat yet. I've, oh, I had one partner asking for this. Um, no, at, at the moment this is this is the the the, the planning, uh, but. Yeah, since this is open source, um, join us. <laughs> the SDKs are there to help you. Yeah, the SDKs are there to, to help you. So, yeah, there's, there's definitely time to... Uh, so all of the footprints that you showed were all like vertical stacks. What about horizontally? Is that supported or planned to be supported? Sorry, the, the horizontally? Well, like failover, uh, HA... Uh, the well, the, the the load balancing and failover, that's going to be part of the um, the future roadmap. Um, you saw that here. So in um, the Fuji release, we will have uh, load balancing there and multi-host. And since it's containers, that that should be pretty doable. It's just a matter of how you're going to manage uh, the on and off of, of these services. So probably we need something on top of EdgeX, uh, for instance Kubernetes or something that, that actually will manage this in, in, a, in, a, in a decent way. Is there any multi-node support right now? Uh, no, it's, 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 uh, at the moment it's, it's not, not multi-node. Any other questions? Very good. Then I say uh, thank you very much, everyone. And uh, yeah, come see us at, uh, at some of the other uh, speakings. I've got some eject stickers. If anyone wants them, I'll set them up here at the table because we don't have our own booth here today. <laughs> Yep. Thank you very much.